So for those that haven't heard about Free for Your DRC, this is a known partisan campaign to raise awareness of the upcoming elections in the DRC and help ensure they're conducted freely and fairly. Of course, this is going to take time in advance, just a few weeks really, in advance of the uh, elections which will take place on the 28th of November. Next month, the DRC will of course take this important step of holding the second ever presidential and legislative elections. This is a vital opportunity to strengthen democracy in the DRC, give a voice to Congolese people across the country, and to move closer to being a fully and properly accountable state. These objectives can only be achieved with a transparent election process and with a level playing field for all candidates. Free and fair elections will offer the best opportunity for stability, security, and growth. We must ensure that the world is watching, and we believe that journalists have a real opportunity to make an impact, as they should. The campaign are pleased to have the support of MPs, NGOs, members of the House of Lords, and others who believe the DRC's future lies in giving its people a fair and free election. Free Fair DRC supports the UK coalition government's commitment to international aid, and indeed uh, the Labour Party's commitment to international aid, but also agree this money must be used in the most effective ways possible. Over the next four years, UK taxpayers will spend £790 million in aid to the DRC. Both the Congolese and the UK taxpayer deserve free and fair elections. Speaking uh, at the campaign launch event in September, Henry Bellingham, the Minister for Africa, uh, said it's vitally important that the elections in the DRC are conduct conducted in a free and fair and transparent manner. He also emphasised that as the largest bilateral donor to the DRC, the UK needs to see that its aid money is spent appropriately, in particular saying that the UK is a friend of the DRC, but at times, of course, we can be a critical friend. Uh, the campaign, of course, as many of you may know, and many of you may not, operates under three main themes, poverty, progress, and potential. The DRC remains the second poorest country in the world. Seven out of ten people in rural areas don't have access to clean uh, drinking water, and almost one in three children under five are severely malnourished. The campaign seeks to guarantee UK aid makes a difference to those people who need it most. Despite the horrifying epidemic of poverty, the country is making progress. In 2006, the DRC's first elections were held uh, after 14 years Civil War. Uh, the international community contrib contributed extensive funding, uh, monitoring bodies, uh, and logistical support uh, in 2006. And I myself was a modest, very small part of it, as indeed was the Speaker of the House of Commons uh, today, John Berko. However, failures to implement the 2006 Constitution in many aspects mean that the DRC is still ranked not free by Freedom House, and that remains of great importance. Let's ensure the 2011 elections are another step towards full democracy. Finally, the DRC offers breathtaking potential, um, boasting some of the largest mineral reserves in the world, which should bring in a vast amount of foreign investment, creating jobs and opportunities for Congolese people in the Congo. Business is slowly developing. Though May 2011, the DRC was ranked 175 out of 183 economies, on the uh, ease of doing business index. Let's give the DRC the opportunity it desperately needs to unlock its vast mineral potential and the potential of its people, the business potential across the board. Before I draw your attention to a video message from Marina Nedelcha, MEP, who is the EU's coordinator of the election programme, I just want to read out a brief message uh, we have from Henry Bellingham. Indeed.